another episode of Vancouver Real. My name is Andy Zaremba, or at Andy Zaremba on Instagram and Twitter. That's key, having the same name for both Instagram and Twitter. Awesome. And with me, as always, is my younger brother, Michael. <laughs> he always has to slide that I have both for Instagram and Twitter. I feel cool. Because I don't. You don't? So that's <laughs> at Floating Yogi for Instagram and <laughs> at Mike underscore Zaremba. Very awkward, very clunky. <laughs> I know, uh, on mistake. Twitter. So, uh, so yeah, rookie mistake and back to, back to the pro. But that's okay. Yeah. So um, we're forgiving, and that's all right. We're all we're all here to learn. It's all about the journey. If Brian Rose were here, he would say it's all about the journey. Brian <laughs> Rose is the inspiration for Vancouver Real. He runs the podcast London Real. London Real. Check and there's out. some really cool developments going on in the real community. There's now Thailand. Uh, there's Thailand Real, there's Bangkok Real, there's London Real. I heard Toronto Real is coming up, New York Real. What else is there? RVA Real, uh, Midwest Real. There was an LA Real, but I think they kind of pit it off a couple years ago. Um, I think there's an Australian one coming, not Australian Real, but like Sydney or something. But anyways, it's, yeah, the last week there's been like an explosion of Reels on, on Twitter. Yeah, and, and now I we're all kind of starting to you know talk. What? Let's go to Maui. Maui Real. Maui Real. That's the, we <laughs> Let's have go. To. We, we I think we have go. to do this. Yeah. Let's start it up. <laughs> you heard it here first, MauiReal.com. <laughs> well, to be act, to be honest, there's a guy I went to Peru with who's on who's from Maui and he was he wants to do it. I'm like, dude, just do it. Just go, but he's dude. been he's been distracted. And, so, uh, so it's up to so the So the real network, fun. check them out. We're trying to see if we can kind of make a global hub for the real network right now. Uh, we don't know what that'll look like. We have the domain same global real TV. So dot TV. <clears throat> dot TV. So maybe that's in the works for a centralized hub for all the reels. We'll have to talk to Brian about that one. And of course, as always, we are broadcasting out of Float House. We are Vancouver's largest sensory deprivation and flotation center located here in Gastown. We have a location in Kitsilano as well and a franchise in Victoria and soon to be a franchise in South Surrey. Very excited about all of that. And if you use the promo code, appropriate one today would be recovery, I think. You will receive a 20% discount off of a single float. Bada bing. So, oh, and we're brought to you by the Vancouver Real Drone. Check that out on Instagram. VR, hashtag VR Drone. Some pretty cool shots of the city uh, from different perspectives you might not have seen before. And today, I'm very excited to have with us Mr. Di Manuel. Yeah. Di, we uh, we met for the first time at what was it? Why VR Dads? Why VR Dads? First time That's I right. met you. YVR but Dads. Di's been one of those guys who has kind of been on the radar, uh, or on yeah, on the radar, I guess, for a long time. I, and I, you know, it's interesting the networking group that's kind of developing in Vancouver sure. right now, or people yeah. kind of joining in or linking up. Yeah. And we start seeing a lot of the same familiar faces. And you were one of them. So I met you at YVR Dads, and then we did Man Talks Man together Talks, with Connor yeah. Beaton, which was awesome. That such was super cool. Like, it's epic. Man Talks is such yeah. an awesome thing. He's got a great thing going there. Oh, it's pretty wild. Yeah. I, and it's such a cool community, right? It's so good. I think the last one, they had like 150 people. Wow. And uh, he's going to keep building that and meeting with Connor tomorrow. So excited. Sweet. Um, so again, we're with Di Manuel. He is the COO of Fitness Town. You can also find him at www.dimanuel.com. He is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all is Di Manuel. Very advantageous. It's nice having a very <clears throat> unique name. Uh, thanks, Mom and Dad. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because trust me, before Google, I was not as thankful. Yeah. You know, are, you, are you from Hi, here originally? I'm from Ontario. From Ontario, yeah, see, right. Yeah, I'm from, I grew up in a place called Bowmanville, which is right near Bo Oshawa. Right, I've heard of Bowmanville. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I've heard yeah. of it too. My mom's in Port Hope now. My okay. dad's in Oshawa. Cool, okay, yeah. very cool. So, nice. but I've been here since 95. So you're you're native pretty much now. I, well, I've been here over half my life, so I like to ask people, <clears throat> does that mean I can say I'm from Vancouver? No, you can't. So you see, I have to leave Vancouver <laughs> for a little period of time yeah. and then come back because then I can actually say I'm from Vancouver. Right. Oh, I just say I'm from Vancouver, even though I live in North Vancouver. So, <laughs> That's Vancouver. Yeah. Hey, man, anywhere in the world. Good enough. That, I think. So, Dai is, uh, well, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit more. You're definitely huge in the fitness community in Vancouver, especially in CrossFit, mm. right? And well, I enjoy CrossFit. It's one of one of the ways I like to train. You know, I was introduced to it a long time ago. I'm sort of a, an old dude in that 
sport, if you will. And uh, mm -hmm. one of my friends uh, opened the very first CrossFit gym in Canada. It's, wow. Uh, it was CrossFit Vancouver over on, well, it's now located on Clark. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great facility. And I see that one all the time. Yeah. It stands out okay. so well. That's the first yeah. one in Vancouver. It was or in the Canada. very first one in Canada. Very cool. When did he open that one? It was the fourth in the world, actually. Oh, uh, wow. They opened that back in, gosh, I think it was 06. 07. Okay. No. I think 06. Yeah. And were you uh, a yeah. part of that in the early goings as a business partner at all? No. No, I okay. just, uh, I was a guy that happened to sell Patty uh, some gear, you know, some benches, some dumbbells, like very basic equipment because as you know, CrossFit doesn't require a lot of big Fancy elaborate stuff. machines. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is this thing CrossFit? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until the movie 300 <clears throat> came out. <clears throat> And then I did some reading and found out that these guys were doing CrossFit style workouts to get in that, to get movie ready. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, I got to try this workout. And so I went in, I did an intro. And the intro, they basically establish where you're starting from, your baseline. And I got spanked, like really spanked. What was oh. your training like before that? I, was, I went to the gym. You okay. know? It's like, like X amount of sets, so many reps. Yeah. Didn't really do much cardio. I was right. all been lifting. Right. And so I went there, and it was a mix of everything, right? You got gymnastics, you got track and field, you've got Olympic weightlifting, you got all this mold, melded together, and it, man, it just beats you up. Mm, yeah. And there's a picture, he got a picture of me after that first session because he was like, oh, here's this guy that's in the fitness industry, blah, blah, blah. And I'm dry heaving up against the chain link fence. It's wow. a beauty. Yeah. I got, I'll dig that out. I'll, it's just, I'll send that to you. That's guys. cool. It's yeah. Pretty fun. I'd love to it's see a that funny one, photo. It's me like literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. But I mean, it's uh, completely understandable. You were training for something completely, yes, completely different, different. Completely different. So, I mean, it's, it's when you cross modalities yeah. of training, of course, yeah. you're going to get tooled the first time you go to something else, right? Well, you know, in football, you would have been doing CrossFit. You, you know did, what I mean? Like, it, you were. We did uh, very similar workouts yeah. to that. Uh, yeah. It was definitely before CrossFit got big, sure. but we did all. Yeah. A lot of functional stuff, like we, yeah, but a lot of outdoorsy stuff. Like we had this one summer, it was great. We had a bunch of core group of guys that all just stayed back and trained all summer long. And it was amazing because the next that next season we just crushed the whole OUA and we nice. just blew through, we walked through the whole um, conference, and then we got stopped by Lavelle in the semifinal mm. game. And they were pretty tough too. They had a lot of guys go pro, um, but we were doing all sorts of stuff. We were doing lots of track work, lots yeah, of running, lots huge, of form running. Huge. Uh, we were doing, of course, we were doing all the the fun stuff like pushing cars and doing crazy duck walks up hills and oh. all, all these nutty things, oh. uh, you know, doing like uh, bouncing push-ups upstairs. Wow. Um, and then, of course, like doing front, you know, all the, squ all the squats and the big lifts, you yeah. know, cleans and everything like yeah. that. And um, the only thing about that was a lot of guys got injured doing it. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, our coach was good. His name was Marcello, and he was, he was he's quite good. He's on his game, I guess, with the training, but a lot of guys ended up, I, I, I really hurt my back one year doing it. Yeah. Uh, and I had to, you know, luckily it was only like a week long thing, but you know, now the back's kind of creeping back on me now. Right. Um, and a couple guys got, you know, yeah. hurt training like that. And, yeah. it's, and it, I think that's, the, I think that's the one danger if you're not doing it right. Well, it's like any sport though. <clears throat> you go out and you push yourself, and you, you know, you were a competitive athlete. You take that mentality and you go and do anything you, you have two speeds. Don't go and go. go. <laughs> and, yeah. and your go is fast, yeah. right? And, well, yeah. and of course, back then too, uh, actually the first time I, I really injured myself, uh, or my back anyways, was deadlifting. And it was mm. actually when I spent the summer out here when I was training and I was at McMaster. And I was just deadlifting. I was doing 315. And uh, I remember the second or third rep, something felt bad. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to eight. And I kept going to wow. eight, which is a terrible mistake. Yeah, and then awful. literally the next morning, I couldn't bend over to pick up my keys. Yeah. I was laid out for a good two weeks. And S I, Kyra, uh, I never had an MRI, so I don't really know. But it was, it was, and then ever since that, I've always had ongoing back stuff. Yeah. So probably bulging discs, who knows, right? Yeah. I mean, he actually, we have congenital stuff in our family. Like he mm -hmm. had, um, he just had a discotomy last year. Yeah. Right? Wow. You could probably yeah. speak about wow. that more. Yeah. But, I mean, it's... And who knows what the cause is exactly, sure. whether it's congenital training or, you know, or, or other things, you know what I mean? Like it just kind of came to a head and then, yeah, basically when my foot stopped working, that's when I was like, okay, wow, let's go see the doctor. But yeah. 
But I mean, and that's something that, you know, turning back to you, though, that's something that CrossFit, like you still actively participate in CrossFit, right? Yeah, I'm not as active as I used to be. Like I've got, I've done CrossFit in spurts because like you've brought up, injury. Right. And that's my own doing. I, I don't blame the coaches. I don't blame anybody else because it was me doing things at a really high intensity. And I probably wasn't ready to do that. Because especially with the amount of Olympic weightlifting, if you know Olympic weightlifting, it really fries your nervous system. And it's super technical. It's very technical. Yeah. But it really, you know, when you're looking at central nervous system and you can't be lifting and doing PR type of training, you know, going for that one rep max every day. Right. No. Meanwhile, when you're younger, you think every day is a new day to set a record. And uh, that's something that we learn, right, through experience. And I think it's fair to say, too, that all of us have kind of grown up and trained through a generation of time where it was like... Way less scientific. That's way, sure. Well, it was still scientific, but we just didn't have the recovery mm, information and, sure. and research that we do now. And, like, how important that recovery is. Like, you know, it's, we always thought it was just like, yeah, you got to... If you want to get real gains in performance and all that kind of stuff, you got to blast it. Yeah. But it's, um, you know, and we never we never really focused on the recovery like it is being done now, especially with sports teams. Like, you know, and that's I think that's the evolution of sports becoming such a high-dollar mm. business. Yeah, sure. Is that these guys get millions and millions of dollars on the contract and if they're injured especially because of training let alone their sport mm. that's a lot of money just sitting on the bench sure and is. so this you know this research has evolved because I think of a lot because of that but um, regardless I gotta yeah. say so you're 38 38 now yeah. 38 yeah you don't look like a lot of 38 year olds well thank you I'll take yeah. that as a compliment it definitely <laughs> is it yeah. definitely is uh, you know what yeah, and also my mom looks really young she's like in her 70s and uh, I, I definitely so it's nothing to do with the hard work what's your, well, I, I look, what's I your look um, lineage what's your background from uh, I'm a mix I'm a mix so Dai is actually Welsh for David okay Manuel is Spanish last name so you can imagine there was some cross pollinating happening cool. at some point sure. yeah. but uh, going back like I think it's about five generations is when we were in Wales um, and then my great 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 grandfather came over uh, from Wales and uh, th but there's there's a few manuals Manuel's over in Europe and yeah. uh, it's all based on whenever that armada invaded yeah. and decided to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> interesting. Nice eh? Welsh women. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, sure. yeah, I don't know if it was as peaceful as that, but who yeah, knows, yeah, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, we just did our 23 of me's uh, oh, did you? in the winter. Okay, cool. And we had a pretty interesting mix. Like we, I was like 25% Eastern European. Uh, no, no, more than that. Like maybe forty-six percent Eastern European, like twenty-five percent Scandinavian, like twenty-five, whatever percent, um, uh, like British, Irish, Scottish. Yeah. Uh, and then like I had point zero one percent Yakut. That was the fun one. Yakut. What? Yakut is like a tribe in Siberia. Oh, that's awesome. It was East Asian. I'm like, what? I've got some East Asian me? That's crazy. That but is uh, cool. it's kind of neat. Have you ever done that before? No, I, you know what? I, I've heard about it. I, I'm going to totally check that out. It's yeah, it's, it's totally worth it. It's yeah, like, I think it's so cool. I think my yeah. kids will get a kick out of that too. Yeah. 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 So, that, that's so awesome. the, the, you know, they say you got, the genetic diversity is huge yeah, for uh, sure. health or whatever. So. Well, it is. And I, I love CrossFit because it really changed my whole training philosophy. You know, like the definition of CrossFit is constantly varied functional movements mm. done at high intensity. Yeah. High intensity is very subjective. You know, sure. to you, to you, to me, we, we all have a different idea of what high intensity would, would be for us specifically. Yeah. Functional movements are movements that we do in everyday life, getting up and down out of this chair. You know, it's a squat. Yeah. Getting up and down off a toilet, that's a squat. It's yeah. getting harder every day. I'm yeah. Telling but you. the day you can't do that unassisted is the day that your quality of life is going to take a drastic turn. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, you look at some of these businesses in North America now, assisted living homes in particular, big business. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And they're saying by 2050, the amount of people in those, is, they won't, it'll be almost like prisons in the U.S., you right. know, from an overcapacity wow. from a population standpoint. Not yeah, that. very, very interesting point, actually. And I heard some stat as well, and I mean, I hate just throwing out, I heard some stat. Yeah, but, yeah. you can um, Google it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Prove me wrong. But yeah. um, basically it was that uh, of the baby, baby boomer population, mm -hmm. by, you know, they're going to have like a crazy number number of centenarians. Yes. Like people that live to a hundred plus. Right. Like I, I honestly I think the stat said like fifty percent of baby boomers will be potentially wow. getting into their hundreds, which seems really high, but I mean, it's true. I mean they they've kind of been alive during a period of time very, very 
uh, really fruitful economically, minimal war, really, I think, at least locally. Sure. And, Very uh, abundant. A lot, of, a lot of abundance, a lot of, you know, leveraging of resources. Yeah. And, and they're not out in the field every day, like, right. you know, plowing fields or whatever kind of manual labor they're doing. There's most sure. a lot of office jobs. You're not, just, which, you know, maybe there's, the, of course, there's a negative side is sitting around yeah. and being sedentary. But, of course, you're not wearing your body out. Your body's not the machine well, in that. Yeah, and you, you know, combine factory. that kind of thing with the fact that they're also... You know, yeah. There's, um, I mean, there's been massive improvements in, in biotechnology and health and wellness and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they've, sure. they've, they've adopted into. It. I mean, they haven't all fully embraced it on every level yet. But I mean, yeah, come on. I mean, you see older guys in their 50s, 60s, 70s now who look fantastic. Yes. So well, you guys like, were at the Superhuman Summit. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, look at the the demo that was there. Crazy. There was a lot of baby boomers in that room. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. learning from doctors and a good chunk of those doctors, those professionals that were speaking, they were Gen X or boomers, right? Right. Like, right. And now they're saying by 2020, the Gen Ys are going to outnumber the boomers. Interesting. You know, wow. yet they're not concerned about collecting stuff, you know, amassing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're more interested in experiences. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why you're seeing the travel industry and, and just a lot more nomadic lifestyles now just it's growing in popularity yeah yeah it's like crazy people are more interested in lifestyle and experiences rather than buying a home buying a car you know yeah. like it, it, values have definitely shifted for sure yeah yeah, yeah. So i think by 2020 we're gonna see some crazy shifts oh yeah yeah i think so yeah, yeah the millennials they they uh they can be <clears throat> as an employer millennials are difficult to deal with um yeah. Because you have to be flexible with them, and they're very big on well, you know, if you're not gonna treat me right, I'll oh, quit and go somewhere else. Yeah, you know, and I guess there's pros and cons to that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's difficult for employee for employers to to keep them around, but if you you know if you manage to keep those people happy, uh, mm -hmm. they'll do a really good job for you too. Sure, you and know, very loyal. You, know, you can't you can, be very loyal. You can. Or then, uh, and then two days later, they're going, I'm going backpacking in yeah. Southeast Asia or whatever, but which is fine. you know what? They'll come back. And they'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had a lot of that in our business. And mm -hmm. where guys will leave and they'll come back. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, six, you know, eight, 12 months later. Yeah. 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 And we're in the Gen X because yeah. the, the uh, 1979 is the cutoff. So I'm, I'm born 1979. So I'm just yeah, Gen okay. X. Okay. And apparently the Gen X generation was very much like they're the ones who just Is that Gen X or Gen Y? Uh, that's Gen, Gen X. X is like yeah, I'm 76. I'm Gen X. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Gen X were the ones they they kind of they went to work, kind of like the generation we before got them. Crazy work ethic. Yeah. Well, for the, yeah, a good chunk of us. Like they say, the ones now who is before that? I guess the boomers. Is, yeah, or, boomers really. So the boomers apparently they're the ones who are like they want their nine to five Monday yeah. through Friday weekends off. Don't bother me on weekends. Don't Save bother for me on retirement. Hours. That's it. Pay their house yeah. off. <clears throat> you know they want to the go Gen travel. Gen X's. Yeah. The Gen X's were, they were the, they worked. They just worked, like they worked crazy hours. They're doing like, you know, the 12 hour days and, and whatever field they happen to be yeah. in and they, and they just pushed it. And I think those Gen X's, at least for myself, maybe yourself too, uh, maybe did that for a while. Yeah. Uh, and now we're kind of like, hey, let's, let's slow the tempo down a little bit, you know? Yeah. Live. Live a little yeah. more. And then the millennials are on the opposite side of that. They, they build their whole life around lifestyle. Yes. Right. I, I like lifestyle management as opposed to time management. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I like to manage my lifestyle. Yeah, there's certain things that are very important, and uh, like the whole idea of taking a vase and putting the big rocks in first, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are those big rocks in your life? And uh, the big rocks in my life are, are really my family first and foremost, and then my health. You know, so yeah, yeah. And those are huge. Got to look after those first. Exactly. Well, if you don't have your your health and your family, I mean, what do you really have, right? It's that's uh, tough, you know. Everything I do is built on a foundation of health. What so, are yes. what are kind of some of your going to health um, with mm -hmm. your background and just your your profession and everything? Like, what are your kind of like your you know your pillars of your your health? What are the main things that you address with your health all the time? What are your you kind know, of big it, ones? I'm always learning. Uh, when I say that, I'm learning new things about myself. Uh, I have an autoimmune disorder, mm. and it's called autoimmune neutropenia. And basically, your neutrophils, which is part of your immune system, is what your bone marrow cranks a bunch of those out. Mm -hmm. uh, my body's killing them off a little bit quicker than my bone marrow can produce it. So I have to take an injection once a week. It's stuff that they give, typically give to people that are suffering from like leukemia or, mm -hmm. or are undergoing any sort of immune suppressed therapy. And uh, it allows my body to at least produce enough you know, overproduce to the point that my body can't kill it off quick enough. So it keeps wow. me at a, about 25% of what the ideal level would be. And, and, and that's my normal. 
That's my normal with medication. And what's the problem? Like, I, I don't know yeah. much about that. So what would be the, the, the side effects for that? Per, well, the, the biggest uh, side effects aside, I mean, that disorder, my, my condition, uh, I've been hospitalized three times. Uh, once was after doing a Tough mutter. Mm, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, in Whistler. Yeah. I... Uh, we talked about it earlier. I, I'm called moose because I run like a moose. Okay, <laughs> my thighs get really chafed. Like, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. this rubbing, and and oh, I never rough. run distance. Like 5K is my kind of a sweet spot for running, and yet you know, tough mudder is four times that distance, mm. and you're up and down, you're going into water, you're getting. I love it, but it's a love hate thing, you know. Gotcha. And uh, so I got these really bad uh, rashes on the inside of my thighs, and then I went in a hot tub. You know, talking about hot tubs oh, earlier, yeah. and, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I got infected and mm. I had to be hospitalized. I went to, basically they put me on an IV drip, they put me into a bubble, literally. Wow. And, and, and I think it's the weirdest thing. So, my so it affects your immune yeah. system. Well, it, I have no immune system. That's the bottom line. Wow. So I have nothing to fight off and stave off the infection. Mm. So it, it often will go systemic very quickly. Oh, okay. And at that point, everything starts shutting down. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, I had a crazy fever. Like, it was nuts. But I've been hospitalized three times. My wow. hematologist, she just shakes her head. She's like, so with that uh, type of disorder, like, I mean, you have, I mean, you're obviously not a germaphobe, but you have to be really careful, just like with infections, like if yeah. you, you know, just make sure, like, okay, I can't be lazy and not clean this wound or something like that. Yeah. And, and, you know, most people, when you get a fever, there's, there's usually a sign there's some sort of infection. So as soon as I get a fever, they typically want me to go to the hospital like, right away. Right. Oh, wow. You know, and I normally don't. Which is, sorry, <laughs> Dr. Ross. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because I'll, I'll, I know what they're going to do. They're going to put me on antibiotics and they're going to put me in a bubble room. And yeah. I sit there until the fever breaks and my neutrophil count rises. And right. I'm like, I can do that at home, you know. Um, but, yeah, I have to be... <clears throat> Cognizant of it, yeah. Um, and I'm not letting it affect my lifestyle. Like I still am very active, and if I, I wasn't tell. as active as I was or as I am, um, my condition would be far worse. Like, right. Yeah. Uh, some of the side effects, and well, with medications alone, I, I feel nauseous for a couple of days a week. And well, that's amazing because if, looking at you, I'm sure most people are like you. People are like, this guy is super healthy. You would never know. I would have never sure. guessed. Yeah. It's you know? uh. Well, it's, I started a blog post right when I was diagnosed with it. And I was like, oh, I'll put it out there. And I just never finished it. It's still in my draft folder. But I, I call it, uh, you know who Joe Cross is? No. Joe Cross did Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I know, you know I the Aussie. Yeah. So I've got this one that's, uh, uh, what was it? Fit, Sick, Not Nearly Dead. So that's a, the title of my blog post. Yeah. You know, it was sort of an homage to, to Joe Cross. So I, I'm going to, you know, based on our conversation, I'll try to get that out. And, cool. Uh, just, just give people some... You know, I, a lot of us have conditions. Sure, sure. You know, it's, I think we we use it as a as a reason not to maintain a certain active lifestyle. Right. It's easier to do that. Right? And, that and that's huge. I mean, uh, that you 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 haven't succumbed to that. You know, we we definitely had an experience. You know, our dad had a uh, you know terrible again we're talking about back issues. Yeah. But uh, you know, he was offered to be put on disability and stuff, oh, and he wow. didn't do it because uh, huh. he wanted to set a good example for us. Wow. Right. And he's Solid, he continued man. working and working wow. hard, and and uh, it's really cool that you didn't let that slow you down at all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting how you've kind of got into fitness a little bit. I know a little bit about your story, mm -hmm. and I have a similar story. You know, yeah, we right. we got fat kid stories. Oh yeah, you know? we do, man. You know, we and, do. and for myself, I was an, uh, an offensive lineman, and at, at my peak, I'll, I'll say peak. Yeah. It was uh, about you know I saw two ninety eight on the scale. Dude, that is crazy. <laughs> two ninety eight. <laughs> I'm sure I crossed over in the three hundred. Yeah. I never saw it. I'm sure I was there though. <laughs> now, you know, now. I remember the, when, I, yeah. when I saw that two ninety eight, I was getting weighed in by Marshall, Coach Marshall, or the guy from wow. McMaster. And he, wow. he's well known coach in the OUA. And I uh, step on the scale, and all he goes, Whoa, Andy. He's like, All right. <laughs> he's all happy for it. I'm like, He's like, Good job. You know, he's, oh, you know how Marshall talks, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. But, uh, and then I took about a year after I was done playing, uh, I took about a year and I dropped that down to about, uh, well, I got down to 205 eventually. Yeah. Wow. Good and, for you. Um, that's lame. And you have a similar story. Sure. And that's partially why you're so motivated in fitness, right? That's how I came to be in fitness. Yeah, I was morbidly obese, or at least diagnosed as morbidly obese. And you look at the de definition of morbidly obese, what is it? Well, it's a BMI of 40 or more, typically. So my BMI surpassed 40 at the age of 14. And mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was a gradual thing. It didn't happen overnight. It's not like I woke up one morning and I was, oh, I'm obese. Yeah. It, it was slow and methodical in, in my methodology. It was eat a lot of food eat a lot of junk food, play a lot of video games, sit on my butt. 
Yeah. And uh, so, how many people are like that? Still, probably. Oh, still today. A lot. Look at some of the stats out there, right? Like yeah. It's it's scary. There's populations where people just don't know any better. Um, and and it's tough, right? We get into a certain place where we've been unhealthy for so long that that's now our normal. You know, so that normal state, it, how do you compare it to feeling good when you don't remember how it felt to feel good? Sure. So it's really hard to make a change. Yeah. Because well, you don't remember. Right? Yeah. yeah. Also, I'll just jump in and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, things that prevent people of even knowing what the right way to take care of their body is sure. in terms yeah. of nutrition, in terms of exercise and like that stuff's not really taught that much. Maybe it's changing now. But back in the day, it wasn't really taught too much in like primary school and stuff like that of like, eat this stuff. And like, you know, kids get bombarded with uh, just sugar, sugar, yeah. sugar is crazy huge in our society today and age. And, and, you know, it's, it's, people are literally addicted to it, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, and, and it creeps up withdrawal. on you, right? It, it can creep up on you. Um, ever since I was about the age of 15, I've been pretty good at the gym. Like I kind of self-taught myself how to work out when yeah, I was 15, nice. which that's is great. maybe not the best way to go about it, but that's oh, what I did. That's great. Um, and I've gone through maybe one period since then for about six months where I didn't work out. Okay. And I, I, I wasn't eating like crazy. I, I gained a little bit of weight, mm -hmm. but then I remember when I went back to the gym again, I was like, wow, this sucks. Yeah. I realized, I'm like, this is why it's so hard to get back into shape When afterwards. was that and why did you stop? <clears throat> um, I was just, I don't know. I think I was just working. I was just taking a break from working out. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to do it for a while. Hmm. I decided, I'm like, I'm done with it for a while. And I took a trip out here visiting you guys at some point. Right. And I went to the UBC gym. I'm like, all right, time to get back into the gym. <laughs> and I, was, I just remember I was just like doing one set of like whatever, of everything, just barely being able to finish that one set. And I'm like, this is why it's yeah. so difficult to get to get in shape for some people. Imagine you're sedentary, especially if you have no coaching at all. Yeah. How hard is that? And it, I find a lot of it's just the emotional coaching as well, right? Yes. Right. We just don't know. And our relationship with foods vary. I'll, I'll be the first to say, you know, fitness is somewhat broken, our industry. And when I say that, we're often dealing with symptoms. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're dealing with people being overweight. We're providing them with certain products and plans and advice. and Supplements. Everything. Yeah. We, we give them all this stuff to treat the symptoms. But we're often not addressing the, the whole picture. Right. And, and I'll, I'll be the first to say that emotionally I was, I was somewhat damaged, uh, you know, when I was younger. Um, I don't blame my parents. It's not their fault. They fell out of love. They got a divorce. Um, my world got rocked a bit. Because again, this is back in a time when divorce rates were not what they are now. It wasn't common, you know? And I was one of the few kids in my class and parents weren't together. And how old were you when that happened? Uh, well, I was nine. You were nine? Yeah. So you're eight, very nine. aware of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I was That's aware, tough. you know? And, and uh, it was hard. And, and you're your only I, child? I, with, no, me and my bro. <laughs> okay. I got a younger brother too. Cool. My, my younger brother's a bigger brother though. You oh, know, yeah? He's like 270. Oh, my wow. <laughs> he's a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> we do the grind together Wednesday mornings. Nice, but, uh, nice. Yeah, you, you guys would like him. We'll, so, come, we'll come do the grind with you someday. Yeah, that'd be awesome. yeah, we live on the North Shore. It's usually it's a, a staple exercise. For us, oh, it's I haven't awesome. been there yet this year. Get you out. Yeah, I know. Get you out, yeah, man. I need to be out. It's fine for sure. It's a, it's a workout. Oh yeah, no, that's it used to be like my cardio that's for sure. Great. Like I used yeah. to try to do it. My thing was do it uh, three times in two weeks. That's Ooh, kind of like good. like the the the. Uh, frequency that I would do train it yeah. at, but since my surgery, I haven't been doing it. Mm. Obviously, so I'll get there. I'll get, maybe not this season, but I'll I'll come back. I used awesome. to love it, man. It's great. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's such a great. It's way all to work stairs out. now too. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole thing, they put yeah. in new staircases. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, any all those parts where you were sort of yeah scampering up rocks. It's no longer yeah, it's like it's nature's you know yeah. stairmaster. It is for sure. It is. Yeah. I tell people if you want to do a hike, do the BCMC to the right. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to do a workout, <clears> you go the grind. Yeah. Yeah. The grind is its own sport. Yeah, I love it. I really yeah, do. I love I it too. It's because yeah. you just all you gotta do is walk. Yeah. You just go. And it's like yeah. the perfect, uh, <laughs> it's the perfect yeah. amount of uh, intensity too, and yeah. the duration. Like it's yeah. just like the right amount. Like when you get to that top part, you're just like, like oh. you, you can start recognizing. Obviously, yeah. you're like you're like, like, getting oh. close. You're like, I oh. love that one turn before the the last turn, and I get to that, I'm like, oh yeah, God, I'm almost there. Yeah. You know, yeah, that last yeah, like yeah. hairpin yeah. turn before yes. that kind of rocky area before yeah. you reach the top. Exactly. That's like the best feeling when you get to that point. <laughs> but I saw your post the other day. Oh gosh. At the one quarter mark. Yeah. And that's so disheartening, especially the first time you do the grind and you 
you see the one quarter uh, mark and you're like, that was a quarter? And they don't tell you, but that first marker relates to uh, elevation. Yes. Right? Not it does just, not relate to distance, but most people don't know that. Yeah. So you can imagine when you get to that, you're like, oh my What's, gosh, I got three quarters left of that. Mm -hmm. And then the first quarter takes the longest to do. Yeah. You know, that's the guys that do really well. They run the first quarter. Yeah. Literally run it, you know, and uh, I've never been able to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, but the guys that are doing sub 40, they're running it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got like a lot of muscle mass. So, I mean, you're, those muscles it's require tough. a lot of oxygen. Oh, yeah. Right. It's, and now you're adding a weight vest onto that. Yeah. So I do a similar. Well, for right now, I don't need a weight vest. Like, I'm, I'm carrying a natural <laughs> weight vest right now. Um, but what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll wear my, my heavy hiking boots yeah, for the cool. first part of the season. And then I switch to my running shoes halfway through. Yeah. And like, seriously, it'll drop two, three minutes. It's from that little change. It's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Every once in a while, because um, I, I, when I do my Olympic weightlifting, I wear Nike Romaleos. And like they're a lifting shoe that are heavy uh, my, because I'm also size 12 feet. Yeah. They're big. They're boats, right? Yeah. And they must weigh three or four pounds each. So every once in a while I'll do metabolic conditioning workouts where it's more, you know, you're trying to bang off as many reps and rounds as you can in a set period of time. Right. And uh, I'll wear those shoes because same it's effect, light. same mm -hmm. effect, you know, try doing like toes to bar, right? Like, oh my gosh, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Super hard. And, uh, but that's great. It's a good idea. Yeah. Really good so idea. A lot of people could definitely yeah. learn I'd, I'd like to know yeah. what is your diet like? What, mm -hmm. what do you what do you eat on a, a sure. really disciplined day? Okay, well, uh, I've I mean it's pretty cool. You were mentioning Dave Asprey's gonna be on your show. Yeah, I've been a big fan of his, not only his podcast but his blog as well. Cool. And so I've been following him for almost two years now. But but I've been doing the bulletproof religiously, probably almost eighteen months now. And I love it. Like it's just I I have sort of a blend between paleo and ketogenic. Okay. Diet. What's the second one? Uh, ketogenic yeah. is really you t tend to you're training your body how to burn fat more so. So it tends to be lower in carbohydrates, higher in protein, higher in fats. But when I am eating carbs, it's typically just fruit and veggies, you know, and, and yams and that kind of stuff. And once in a while, I'll have some rice. Um, I don't tend to have a lot of breads. Uh, again, because I have an autoimmune disorder, I'm a little bit pickier than probably most are, uh, just because I recognize that there's certain foods when I eat it, I, I get an inflammatory response. You know, I, I really try to be aware uh, of the food, like mindful. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I've heard you guys talk about mindfulness and sure. uh, just being present. Yeah. And we do that with our kids. You know, I, I coach a lot of parents on how to help their kids with better eating habits. And it's really just having a conversation. Yeah. How do you feel? You know, 30 minutes after you've had your meal, how do you feel? You feel like you want to go to the park and still keep running or do you feel like you got to have a nap? Mm -hmm. There's a reason why that's happening. Yeah. You know, and they go to a birthday party. They want to have cake. My, my daughter, and it's funny because we have a lot of autoimmune disorders in our family. Mm. So clearly it's a genetic thing um, to, to an extent. Uh, my daughter's got juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, my 12 year old. Oh, wow. And uh, so she has to watch her diet as well. So it's made it very, I shouldn't say easy. Um, it's never easy, but it's we, we can simplify our diet. Right. Um, and just we, we tend to do a lot of whole foods. So we go to whole foods. We, yeah. we tend to go. Uh, we also get spud religiously once a week. Uh, spud local Vancouver company here. It's you know you should probably get Peter, the CEO of that company, on the show. Peter. Right? Peter. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll introduce you. That'd be you. awesome. Yes, I'd love yes, to get him on. Uh, he's super sure. cool. I, I do some stuff with Spud. I'm an ambassador with them. And, oh wow. And, but it, it's basically sustainable produce, urban delivery, and oh, so they sounds... deliver organics and they'll even tell you how many kilometers uh, the, the, everything uh, how much travel was required to get you everything in your basket you know wow. so cool. it's, it's just really cool they're a yeah. great little company and yeah. I, I just like supporting local if I can yeah and uh, so they're a cool story uh, so we use that and so you know we try to just eat whole foods try to prepare our own meals and when yeah. we go out we're we recognize we're going out it's a treat okay but now you're you know you're a busy guy mm -hmm. like you pack your days so how do you how do you work around that how do you you know, do you plan a lot? Is a lot of planning involved? Do you bring food with you? Yeah. What, what's your strategies? Yeah, if I know I'm going to be out for like a long day, uh, like yesterday was a long day, I filled my cooler. I, yeah. I had, well, we always tend to, my wife's great this way. She'll she'll always make extra at dinner, nice. <laughs> knowing full well that I'll eat it tomorrow. Yeah, and right. uh, so I'll we'll typically, you know, partition it out and contain.
containers. So I'll have at least two or three meals um, already ready to go in the fridge at any given time that I can just grab the Tupperware out. Nice. And then also I uh, have healthy snacks. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Genuine Health. They make Greens Plus. I don't know if you're familiar with Greens Plus. It's just yeah, yeah. great I know, I know little product. Are, it's been around like 25 years. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something yeah. that I've been using for almost that long. Yeah, uh, cool. And I love it as it's just sort of a, uh, a staple that I use in like uh, my water. So I know I'm getting a lot of vitamins. You're getting all your greens. My greens, vegetables. right, throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I also eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And, uh, and then I have some supplements that I use. Uh, not a lot of, but I use some. You know, not not uh, sports supplements, but I tend to use more uh, nutrition supplements. Okay. Yeah, like uh, protein, coconut water. I'll mix that as a recovery shake post workout. Okay. You nice. Know, like coconut water and a scoop, and yeah. that's it. Like, what yeah. kind of protein Sometimes. do you consume? Uh, genuine health. Genuine health usually. Okay. Yeah. Is it a whey or? Uh, they've got uh, a vegan one that okay. is fermented. Actually. Oh. It's really cool, and because of my autoimmune disorder. If you do the research, like, there's a lot of benefits to having fermented. Sure, uh, the probiotic stuff. Yeah, we should give you. Yeah, we should yeah. give you. Do we have any hemp force kicking around still? Oh, cool. We may. We may. If we can dig one up for you, we were selling it for a while, but they weren't. Protein wasn't a huge seller here, so we kind of mm. we kind of rid of it. But you can try these hemp forces. Uh, I'm trying that shroom stuff that you. Shroom tech. Here. Oh, apparently people rave about that. You one. should try it when you go to the drying. No, yeah. I've been doing that. Okay, yeah. sweet. I take three. You take the yeah. shroom tech. Like three, three, thirty minutes beforehand. Yeah, nice. And it's usually yeah, so I have my bulletproof, and then I have about. 30 to 40 minutes before I go do the grind and during that time I'll typically as I'm driving over I'm popping those and they've been yeah. awesome yes yeah. no. it's a really good yeah. product well that's what they say. I, know yeah. I, haven't, I haven't given them a shot yet I've done yeah. Alpha Brain uh, and the, the uh, Hemp Force but I haven't done Shroom Tech really yet so that's I'm good. You know, good yeah I don't know My, I'm, I still need to get down to a more you know appropriate body yeah. level right well, now and that's, that's but um, too, like I mean, mean it's for me it's this lifestyle stuff right now in terms of how mm -hmm. how much spent time i'm spending sitting like right. i sit a lot i drive a lot yeah so it's just like you're you know and um and then on weekends you know i like to have a couple beers and then i, I go out for a couple di a couple dinners and then you know i then i get back to the week and i'm more disciplined and i'm working yeah. out or whatever but uh you know it's just, it's 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 hard it's hard to balance it all i, I find it difficult anyways i mean what well, i can tell you it, it's part of i mean i mentioned that i got a book coming out uh, oh, in yeah, january right. yeah. the whole life fitness manifesto yeah cool. and it's all based on wow 18 years i've been in the fitness industry and when i say i've been in the industry i've actually been earning an income from it so i'm not just a moonlight kind of guy that was working a few jobs and saying i'm a trainer i'm i've been in it working with people mm -hmm. and the thing that i've noticed the most is, is the excuses we tell each other uh, and tell ourselves especially they're typically just bad habits in disguise right like they're just we get into these cycles where it's easier to blame external forces than to just own it and just make the time it's true you know what i mean like and it's i'm guilty of it too trust me i am so guilty of it uh, and that's why I, I tried to create more of a program that can fit every lifestyle and it's sustainable for life. And that's been my whole goal. So it's literally 30 minutes a day that you have to commit to yourself. And it's 15 minutes of working out, five minutes of mindfulness and 10 minutes of personal development. And it's literally you commit to doing it, follow through with it for 30 days. And it's amazing to see the shift in people yeah. because it just reprograms you and gets you into a good mood. And once you're in a good mood and you start feeling better, especially about yourself and the confidence, you start to make better decisions. Right. Because you start to feel good again. Right. And uh, it's like even with, I have a lot of morbidly obese clients that I coach and, and my biggest thing with them is I just want you to walk. They're like, well, what do I have to change my diet? I'm like, nothing. I don't care. I, I'm not worried about that right now. I just want you to walk. Every day you're gonna go Oof. walk, yeah. you know, just walk. Now, is this part of the prescription okay. of your book? No, this is for, I can't necessarily get everybody in there right away. I scale all the movements, all body weight exercises. And uh, my business partner doesn't like that because it's, you know, fitness town, we sell equipment. Right. <laughs> it's sort of been even my. But you got to start with. Team, you you got to start with basic movements. Yeah. I mean, that's. I'm still at that stage from post recovery from surgery. Love like, um, there's no point for me to start moving weights around. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll pick up the odd sure. weight and do different things. But the the bulk of the work I'm doing right now is all body weight stuff. Yeah. It's mechanics, range of motion, engagement. Learn literally teaching my body how to move and re-engage. Yes. Uh, like, for example, like with especially with the herniated disc L5, it's uh, I lost my whole right glute. Yeah. Literally, and that's such a major muscle for Massive. for your back and Stability. your legs and your hips and so you know i'm like i have to reteach it and also be very patient too because like that nerve process yeah. uh, it's like if you're a healthy individual with no neurological issues mm -hmm. you actually can get a lot of improvements neurologically really really quickly yeah 
but uh, when I've had some nerve damage and that nerve regeneration is very slow and so it just takes a long time but it's coming it's yeah. just you know you got to be very diligent very patient with it and I can totally see how people yeah. who had something wrong with them you know maybe stick at their physio for three four months maybe but then the, the progression is so small yeah. i can i can see how people just like just lose it and give up yeah. and then they're you know they're kind of bound with like this literally this lifelong disability well one, one thing know? i could I'll give you a lot of credit for is we both come from um very uh fit and health and wellness sports backgrounds and mike right. you, you've got your master's in coaching science like he, he used oh, to train awesome. for the hamilton tiger cats like wow. he's got a really so physicality was a huge part of our lives yeah. you know and then you suffer this injury which had it had to you had to change uh your outlook on your lifestyle completely. a little bit yeah oh yeah, completely know? like i've had to and and to, to be honest the, the the toughest thing was the mental part of just i mean this sounds really vain but it's just like the, how how you look mm -hmm. like i mean say it or not like uh, my body is not what it used to be and i mm -hmm. and i always did train for performance and functionality and stuff like that yeah. but one of the secondary byproducts of that is that sure. you look fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. now I just can't do that anymore. And right. uh, so, you know, just having the, you know, getting comfortable again with taking my shirt off at the beach, hula hooping in slow motion, having people <laughs> Dude, post that, that to awesome. Instagram. <laughs> that was awesome. You know. That's um, awesome. Well, the, the good thing is you got the sense of humor and that's actually a strength that you can go and do that and it's it's, it's cool. And the thing is, it, it's, it's, it's good to have that kind of sense of humor about yourself because I don't know if I do as much as you as, well, as, as, you just gotta you like, know? You know what? I mean, I'm, yeah, it's it's you come to a point where you just accept it and it's not worth. I'm not going to yeah, I just don't give a fuck. I just don't. No, good you know? for you. Well, that's, that's, good. that's what you, you know, kind of come to. It's only skin deep, right? Like 100%. at the end of the day, we're gonna, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it's functionality, it's lifestyle, it's how you're going to age. I want to age well. I yes. want to be able to uh, and I, I've mentioned this uh, to a lot of people, especially when I'm doing talks or I'm doing coaching large groups. It's like, listen, how do you want to be 20 years from now? What do you want to do? Like, what lifestyle do you want to lead? Yeah. What level of health will you require to lead that lifestyle? A lot of people look at everything from a financial standpoint because mm. it's ingrained in us, right? It's like, oh, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this. So I'm going to need X amount of dollars. You know, you, you go Freedom 55, right? Yeah, <laughs> What's sure. the plan for you? Well, this is how much you're going to need by 55 years old so you don't have to work for the rest of your life. And you're going to be able to do all the things that you just told me you want to do. They never tell you that you're going to have to be healthy. <laughs> they don't tell you that, hey, you want to go on that tour of Europe? Well, you're going to be sitting in the bus looking at it from the window because you functionally can't carry your own body weight around the monuments. Right. Well, that's not the kind of life I want. You know? Yeah. So it's it's really trying to understand like functional. Get yeah. get real with yourself. Don't worry about how you look. Worry about how you move. Exactly. What's the name of your book again? Uh, Whole Life Fitness Manifesto. Very cool. And yeah. and it's coming out early January. Next year. January 2016. Very cool. Yeah. Is it going to be? Uh, is this like, your first book? It's my first book. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I've been. It's funny because I'm really comfortable with blogging. I've been blogging since literally 2007, 2008, and. You know, blogging's 500 words, roughly. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm really good at 500 words. It's my sweet spot. But all of a sudden, trying to write a book, you know, 270, 280 pages, it's been a bit daunting. It's been a, a very a big learning experience for me, mm -hmm. uh, but it's been a lot of fun. How yeah. did it come to be? How did that, uh, when did you realize, oh, I'm writing a book now? Or was it kind of preconceived, like, I'm going to do this challenge? And yeah. like, how, how did it come about? Yeah, it, it, I've done a lot of challenges. So I, I often will throw out to people these challenges. And it started last November. I was lying in bed with my wife. It was actually October. You know, it's about a week before Halloween. I was like, hey, you know what? For November, I want to throw a fitness challenge out to my community on Facebook. And she goes, well, what's it going to be? I'm going to call it the 300 a day challenge. And she's like, what, what's that going to be? Well, 100 push ups, 100 body weight squats, and 100 sit ups every day for the month of November. And she looks at me and she goes, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Christy. But she won't admit it. <laughs> then she looks at me and she goes, I go, do you want to do it with me? No, fuck you. <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. And I'm like feeling a bit deflated. It's Sunday morning. We're about to go coach our Sunday fun day yeah. group class. And I'm like, oh, well, screw you. I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> nice. you know? And so I threw it out on Facebook, created an event page and all that. And uh, had 1,300 people sign up. Wow. Yeah, in, in just under a week. And uh, so the, the fees are crazy. The activity was crazy. All these people just doing it, you know, committing to doing these 300 repetitions. And you didn't have to do it all in one sitting. It was like just throughout the day, you're going to get that amount of work done. 
you know, so I saw, and the challenge was also, hey, post, if you're out anywhere in the world, post pictures, show videos of wherever awesome. you're doing it. Cool. So there was somebody like in, in Cairo and yeah. uh, in here, some pyramid and yeah. they're, they're banging it off there. There's another person oh, in Greece or, or so Athens. Cool. Well, and, uh, so it was yeah. just really neat. We yeah. were on every continent. And uh, so it got me thinking though, because it's community that keeps us really engaged. And that's the one thing I learned from CrossFit is that community is key and it's why it's grown as quickly as it has. It's that group accountability. It's also, you know, look at brothers in arms. You come from a professional sports, both of you, where team is so crucial. Like the, that brotherhood, right? Oh, yeah. for sure. And yeah. um, so I've tr been trying to incorporate that in a larger format, but, it, you know, online allows us to do this now. You can if it's done right. And uh, so I've had the opportunity since January now, I've had a bunch of people go through the program, uh, a few hundred people. All tremendous success you know they, they have to apply to be a part of it they have to be prepared make a choice to actually commit to the process and those that have have followed through and got great results and it's not a matter of having to go to the gym an hour a day four days a week you know it's literally 30 minutes a day commitment that's true yeah. I think that's the strength of uh, like those group fitness classes like yeah. CrossFit or any kind of group fitness boot camps whatever it happens to be even going to yoga three four times a good hard power class a couple times a week yoga. you know yeah. all those things are, are amazing because it kind of well in yoga they call it the kula as you want to call it right. you get the energy from the whole group yes. right so the whole group is pushing each, yeah. each other forward in a sense you get that in a crossfit gym you get that on the football field you get that anywhere yeah so, right so yeah. You, there is yeah. something you know if you have you see 10 guys working hard you're not going to be that guy who's slacking off yeah you know so that i think that's part of it there well i was gonna say on the back issue too uh, it, it's why I, i've not been as active in crossfit as i have the last really almost two years is i i my l4 l5 i had a tear between mm. and uh so i had the disc slightly bulge and uh i i still don't have feeling in my left big toe <laughs> i guess oh, yeah. so i had some some nerve damage and, yeah, yeah. and uh you talk about rehab and holy crap like it was, it was, I call it the Humpty Dumpty effect, you know, like literally I had all the King's men. I had an RMT, I had a Cairo, I had a physio, you know, I, I had a couple doctors, you know, I, I was doing whatever I could to get back. Yeah. And I, I finally accepted, it's like, you know what, I'm never going to train at that level again. Right. I just, I can't, I yeah. just, I can't. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I'll figure out new ways of moving my body. And that's when I got into mud runs, you know, and uh, so that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. What's yeah. a mud run? Well. Uh, like Spartans races. Okay. I, I think yeah. London Real actually, they just had a, a post go out. He just interviewed the, the founder, Depenna or whatever his name is. And, yeah, uh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I think it just cool. happened. But uh, so it's really cool if you check it out. That's the guy that founded Spartan. But oh, cool. so there's a Spartan race. You, you, there's there's so many of them now. Yeah. But Tough Mudder and Spartan are clearly the the ones the, that have the the, the the big name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's a bunch of other ones popping up now. When is the next uh, Tough Mudder here? Well, Spartan was just pat this last weekend. Oh, did and you now do that? I did it, yeah. How'd it go? Yeah, it was great. It was, yeah. it was awesome. In my age group, uh, I came eighth. Nice. Yeah, like so it's a solo dudes, event? So it's a solo it's event? Uh, Spartan's different. Spartan is a race. Okay. And they call this the Spartan Sprint because it's it's typically five to six K. So it's a lot shorter in duration. Uh, where Tough Mudder is more team and it's not timed. So you go out, you just do it. And a lot of the obstacles require having people there with you to, to, to surpass it, to, to right. overcome those obstacles. And so it, it's a lot of fun. And we, we typically bring a team of about 40 to 50 people up with us every year when we wow, do Tough Mudder. Huge. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And uh, most of them, 80% first timers. Nice. So you can imagine, they're, they're, they're coming up, they're pretty intimidated. They've, they've gone on YouTube. Yeah. They've looked up some videos. They've seen guys getting shocked, falling face plants in the mud. <laughs> I'm like, no. Yeah, it's not that. And it's like, don't worry, don't worry. It's more yeah. psychological than anything. And, uh, yeah. But when they finish, like what we were talking about the grass grind, you know, you, you finished hiking 2.9 kilometers straight up a hill, literally 3,000 steps. Who's the happiest person on that mountain at that time? Whoever just finished climbing that, oh, you know, yeah. you're yeah. happy, you're oh. fired up, you have yeah. belief in yourself. Totally, I think all of that, the, the sense of accomplishment, but then also just, man, like the first grind of the year, it's always like, <laughs> it's it's death. Yeah. Like you, yeah. I literally like feel like I'm tasting blood in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> but the runner's high, the endorphin uh, release you get that from that, yeah. It beats any medical dispensaries, cannabis, like crazy. You're just, oh, yeah. Honestly, you're just yeah. like, whoa, I'm driving down that hill. You you know, I like to put my car in neutral and just kind of roll down That's from, awesome. from Grouse Grind down to, you know, Capilano Road or whatever it is. Yeah. It's just like, oh, you feel you're amazing. You, yeah, do. you feel, you feel amazing. great. Yeah. yeah, you really yeah. do. It's yeah. powerful stuff, man. That's, that's the thing. That's, you know. 
everyone that gets into health and, and wellness activities, we, that's why people get so preachy about it. It's because like we know how good it makes you feel. Yeah. And it's probably really annoying for people that aren't really involved or, you know, they probably get like, fuck, I know, okay, I get it, you know what I mean? But that's just because we know how much it, it means to us. And, yeah. and uh, it's, you know, and we just want everyone to experience that. But there's, it's really challenging. I can imagine, like you said, after taking a six month break, someone that's been active your whole life, that oh, it, felt awful. it felt just after six months. Imagine not yeah. really being exposed to that with your at all in your life. So yeah. you gotta really, you know, be kind to yourself if you're in that position. Don't you know? Yeah. Don't feel like you gotta go and climb mountains and bench press this and just start walking. So exactly. walking exactly. And and you know, eventually you want to get to a point where you are challenging yourself. You know, you, you get into a space where you know that was when we were talking about the definition of intensity. What does it mean to you? Well, we're all going to have a different idea, um, but it's getting comfortable with feeling slightly uncomfortable. Yeah. You, you know, like yeah. you said, you finish the ground, you feel like you got you taste blood in your throat. Well, yeah. you've been pushing yourself. You know, yeah. cardiovascularly, you've just been running it, revving oh, high. Oh, your heart's and, just yeah, and it's okay. You're going to recover. You're going to be okay. And, and when you come back and do it again, you, you're going to find that you can sustain the intensity a little bit longer. You know, and it, that's where the really good things start to happen, though, especially when you start looking at hormones and uh, growth hormone in particular. You know, when you're training, there's all these studies that show that when you train at high intensity, especially for short periods of time, that's why sprinters look the way they do. It, they, they look fantastic. And they have growth hormone cranking through their veins, you know, yeah. uh, post workout, and they just keep it going, keeps them looking good, yeah. keeps them looking young, keeps them burning fat. Yeah. Let me ask you this: So, when you're in the midst of one of your tough workouts, yeah. what, what do you do to motivate yourself and get yourself through those workouts? You know, I, I look at it like taking my kids to the park. Okay, and when I take them to the park, I'm like, okay, you guys want to play? Yeah. And I watch them. They're on the playground, right? They're, they automatically they go up to other kids that they don't know. They introduce themselves. They say hi. They make friends very quickly. Like it's just watch kids. Just watch them naturally. And I look at them and I'm like, they're moving their body a lot. My one daughter, she doesn't do gymnastics, but she could. Like she's self-taught. Like she does handstands, walks on her hands. Yeah. She'll get on the monkey bars, and if there's no other kids there, she'll go back and forth. Wow. And, and she'll challenge herself. Oh, I did 13 times last time, so I want to do 14 today. That's you know, cool. like, it's crazy. She's 10 years old. But yeah. to her, it's a game. Mm. She's having fun. She's enjoying herself. And a number of years ago, I started looking at my workouts in much the same way. Trying to be like a kid. Trying to have fun with it. And realizing that there will become a point where it will end. <laughs> so I want to make the most of that time. Be very mindful and, and set an intention with the time that I'm going to spend. A lot of my workouts... 15 20 minutes like yesterday i did a workout it was like i mean i did the grind in the morning but then i did a workout in the afternoon uh just to do some resistance and just to do a little bit of a hit um my workout was less than eight minutes you know, yeah. I, I did wall balls and uh it's these are where you take a 20 pound weight a you know, big medicine ball and you do a deep squat and then you thrust up and you have to hit a 10 foot target and then you catch it again and go down to a deep squat and do 150 of those as fast as you can in and a row well, you break it up as any way you have to. Okay. You just you the start the clock and gotcha. you just keep going till you've got 150 done. Wow! And uh, that would work out in cross. It's called Karen. So okay. it took me like six minutes and 22 seconds. You know, and uh, but the first time I did that workout, like when I first started CrossFit, it took me almost 16 minutes. Wow! Like more than 10 minutes longer. Yeah. But over time, you become conditioned. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're able to handle a heavier load. And this is like with everybody. That guy that gets off the couch to just go out and walk 100 meters. It was challenging. As, as an outsider looking in, um, I've never been involved with CrossFit myself. Yeah. But it seems like there's an amazing community with, within CrossFit. I believe so. And uh, can you speak a little bit more about that? Like, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the community involved with, around well CrossFit. look at how it started right like greg glassman the founder he, he basically started training people this this constantly very functional movement done at high intensity this is his, his underlying definition of his training philosophy you know of crossfit and people are like what is this thing and he started posting a daily workout you know a wad a workout of the day started on like a blog just a revolving blog you just and slowly people started to get attracted it's, hey you see this thing it's just it's different style of training it's really weird man it feel like i've been beat up my workout was less than 10 minutes but it felt harder than anything i've ever done in an hour you know it, it just started to have a lot of people talking and you can imagine as he did that is at the same time when social media 
and just online communities really started to, to mm -hmm. grow. When was that? So CrossFit happened, I, I, you know, I don't want to be misquoted, but roughly, I, I would say right around 2000. So I believe CrossFit's been around 13 or 14 years. So it might be 2001, 2002. Um, it was after Google. <laughs> you know? okay, yeah. uh, so Google was already around. Yeah. Um, I don't believe Facebook was around yet. No. It was uh, probably MySpace, maybe. Yeah, MySpace. Yeah. But he basically just had a blog. I think it was like on a like uh, what was the old blogger? Or blogger? Yeah. yeah. Blogger. Like it was an old blogging platform. Yeah. One of the first original ones, and it was a free service for people to put up blogs. And uh, I think it was originally on one of those platforms. And the format hasn't changed a lot. If you go to CrossIt.com, it, it's it's not a flashy website. It's information heavy. It's there's a lot of material there, tons of material. But there's a workout that's posted every day, you know, and it's three on, one off. That's the philosophy. You train for three days in a row, then you take a day off, and then you do three days on, one day off, and it's ongoing forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do it. But it was a community that helped it grow and kept people coming back. And so that's how it started and it's how it is still today. So you go into any CrossFit gym, I go traveling, I'll pop into CrossFit gyms all over the place and most of them just let you train for free. You know, like they just, sometimes they'll have an something. expectation to buy a t-shirt, you know, like buy a t-shirt and we do, we wear our t-shirts like they're badges of honor. Yeah. You know, like it, it's really funny to look at CrossFit. You, you meet a guy that's been in CrossFit for a long time, just ask him, how many pairs of shoes do you have and how many t-shirts do you have? Yeah. And I've got three piles outside of my closet <laughs> of t-shirts. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. You and, know? and the like, bulletproof coffee thing is big yeah. in the CrossFit community, is not it? It is. Well, I think it's, yeah, it, you know, it's like paleo, right? Like paleo, it was originally zone was what they were teaching often uh, it was the zone diet okay you know and uh, that's the the idea of macronutrients and really monitoring your macronutrient intake that sort of 30 30 40 splits uh, so 30 percent protein 30 percent uh fat 40 percent carbohydrates is that sort of basic zone mix and depending on what you're training for you're going to switch up the ratios well paleo offered a whole nother layer to that and that was because of rob wolf because rob wolf was into crossfit <laughs> in the early days and he sort of broke off from that because they there's been some people just look it up you just go online drama. you can look up it, drama okay it is it's drama and uh yeah, there's some drama. I, I, I'm not going to go into it. There's no the, organization that doesn't have it, it seems like. Yeah, so. yeah. and yeah. it's the it, same like me. You, you listen to some of Rogan's podcast, right? Every once in a while, there's some drama there, too. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I love his show. Yeah, well, you know, that's <laughs> I wanted, That's one thing I want to talk about uh, Dave Asprey oh, with. Because yeah. uh, Dave was, is not too keen on Rogan anymore. No. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know. a bit of a falling out. Yeah, well, uh, as uh, what Dave said was that after he went, uh, he did the podcast, and Rogan was kind of boosting bullet proof yeah. and everything and then uh apparently a friend of uh rogan started a coffee company and he started promoting this guy's coffee company and started bashing dave asprey and saying it was a fraud and this and that uh. and so dave's all yeah so there's definitely that thing going on there um i want to kind of ask him about that but uh, that's tough yeah but I'll, I'll tell you like the ketogenic diet which is really what that's all about it. Like you're having high fat content first thing in the morning. You know, it's empty stomach. You're, you're taking MCT oil. You're mixing in, you know, grass-fed organic butter. You're using single-origin coffee extracted, you know, some really high potency. You're mixing this all up together. And, you, you know, he uses his collagen protein. Mix that in there. You blend it up. You've got, I think it's about 600 calories in the, the amount that I'm taking. Oh, wow. So it's a 600 calorie, straight up, mostly fat and some good quality protein. Your metabolism is revving. Okay, yeah. and I'm like flying for six, seven hours before yeah. I have to eat again. Now I get up at five every morning, so I'm up at five, and by by twenty after five, I've got my bulletproof going. You know, and I won't eat again until noon, and I feel great. Like I don't, I don't have any dips. It, it's it, and I just tell people, just try it. it. It's one of those things you read it, you look at it, and it's like, how is this good for you? Yeah. And you met the Coppins uh, from yes. Some, yeah. Talk to them. Yeah. Because they will go into the science of why it works. I, I don't like to bore people with it. I just say, you know, you, you go to Dave Asprey's blog and it will talk about the science all day long because he went and you saw the yak butter, right? Like yeah. With the, the guys climbing. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these guys are sustaining themselves in these long mammoth hikes up these huge mountains. And, and predominantly their diet was composed of yak butter. Like wow. just, they were on a ketogenic diet, so they were learning to well, think about it. how much calories is in one gram of fat versus one gram of protein. Nine versus, Nine three. versus four. Yeah, oh, four, more than right? double. 
it's more than double. So if you could start to manifest that energy and use that to power you, you, you can literally get twice the bang for right. that buck. You know? yeah, right. yeah. And uh, you're teaching your body how to, to do that. And when you're in a state of ketosis, and, and you know, there's some negative press around that too, but like anything, you, you, you can, and that's the problem with Google, Okay, like with anything online, is as much. Well, yeah, look, look at Mother Teresa. Type in Mother Teresa. Type in I love Mother Teresa. You get millions and millions of hits. You type in I hate Mother Teresa, and there's just as many. You know, so yeah. uh, what yeah. do you believe? It, it, there, there's always going to be an opinion. Yeah, uh, find That's out right. what works for you. Yeah. You know, and just so, so Dai, you are a fitness professional. CEO of Fitness Town. CEO. CEO. I'm the second. CEO. You are a uh, now a author or going to be an author. Soon to be. Soon to be. Yeah. And uh, you're also really big in the uh, social media world. Mm, yeah. Now, how did you learn all these skills? How did you how did you get all this this wide variety of uh, skill set? Connect with people and don't be afraid to ask for help. It, you know, I. I I'm very humble that way. I, you guys come from a background where you've worked with coaches. You know, and what's the number one rule of being coached? You gotta be coachable. <laughs> you gotta be willing to say, yes, I don't know how to do that. Teach me, tell me what to do. And I've always been that way in every job I've ever done and every career path, uh, everything. You know, right from the time when I, my mental shift happened at age 14 where I was like, I'm not gonna be that fat kid anymore. I wanna get healthy, I gotta figure out how to do it. And it was old school, this is all pre-Google. I had to go to the library. Yeah. And if you don't know what a library is, look it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> Google it. Yeah, you can Google libraries now and they're all online. But I, I actually had to go to a physical building and find books on health and fitness. And then, fortunately, I had a, a friend of mine that had a gym membership. He was getting into fitness. He said, well, come along with me. And trust me, going into a gym, it's a scary thing to do. Uh, I was that guy that was like, you know what? I'm too fat to go to a gym. <laughs> and, like, yeah. and then you, how many times did you hear that? You know? Like, yeah. I, I, no, I'm too out of shape to go to a gym. Like, right. Uh, how's that work? Yeah, you know, yeah. How does that yeah. work, right? And mm -hmm. uh, so I was getting right with that, and, uh, yeah. and then just committed to a process and listened to other people and started to educate myself. Same goes with social media. Um, back in '06, is that when Facebook started? Around was, then, right around then, a little earlier, maybe a little, five, maybe a little yeah. more than that. I remember I got a bunch of invites, but it wasn't until I got the invite from my brother to join the network. You know how everybody was all of a sudden the, your inbox was just being inundated with it was, messages. It was, it was, it was, how they did that? You've watched the uh, the Social Network, yes, or was yeah. that what it's called, the Social Network? Uh, the you, one, the you movie, the, the documentary, movie. or the one about uh, that had uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, Timberlake? Yes, just yes. was it Justin Timberlake? Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he wasn't he, the main guy. No, but, he was the, the, the Napster guy. Yeah. He was the Napster yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, you saw that. Yes. And, and I guess that's kind of how it went for yeah. them. That's an yeah. incredible it's a, story. It's an amazing story. It's an yeah. amazing story. Yeah. But uh, I started looking at this and social networks online. I was like, man, there's something to this. And because I was in a position of building my business, uh, my CEO, my business partner, is 20 years my senior. He has no interest at all in social media. He, he jokes. He's like, you just call me Clapton. And I'm like, Clapton? What do you mean? I'm unplugged. You know, like Eric Clapton. He's yeah. like, I'm yeah. unplugged. Yeah, and, nice. uh, and it was cool. So I, I sort of had the, the reins on that front. So I started to educate myself because we were setting up Facebook pages. We were setting, getting websites. on LinkedIn and websites and starting to integrate uh, e-commerce a few years back. And so I had to learn a lot of this stuff and because consultants aren't cheap. And they just come in and tell you what to do, but very You're often doing the work. You, you, you end up doing the work. But yeah. a lot of time, I don't feel very empowered because at that point, I'm just doing a task list, and I don't really understand all the things that are on the task list. Yeah. It's really hard to learn, you know? Like just yeah, just go do it. And I hate when people say just go do it. And I'm like, what do you mean just go do it? I don't understand the context of what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, so then I just started reaching out to people. And Vancouver's a hotbed. There's a lot of great people here that know social media and digital strategy very much so. Oh, you yeah. Know, like Bosco could Anthony's you, a yeah, great Could you make some recommendations on that? Yeah, Bosco Anthony. And uh, so you can just go to boscoanthony.com. He's sort of a self-taught guy as well. And uh, he's got his own company here. He works with a lot of companies like the White Caps and stuff like that. And, and he speaks all over the place on social media and I connected with him online and started to read his blog and he was giving out all this great information and he and then there's a guy named John Chow which is sort of one of the top internet marketing gurus and I think he lives out of Richmond um, the guy, he's a character cool yeah. um, and he's he's out there like he's all over just type in John Chow and you will see all his stuff online and, and he's entertaining and he's very charismatic but uh, he's one of the first guys to really make big money internet marketing 
He's local here too. And then there's Stefan. Uh, I forget his last name, but he lives downtown here. He's like the Kindle god. <laughs> yeah. The guy's got, I, I forget how many Kindle titles, over 100 titles, which are providing wow. a passive income that's easily five figures a month. Just passive, right? Like you just, they're up there on the Amazon store, Kindle books, and it just brings in. And now he teaches people how to do that as well. Right? Yeah. And so he's here as well. So Vancouver is, I mean, you know, you got Hootsuites and the EAs. And so there's a lot of tech businesses here. Sure. So if you're looking to learn, there's people to connect with. Wow. Very and, cool. Uh, yeah. So it's just. And just on, Amazon's on its way it. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, right. right here. They just leased a whack of space in Burnaby, is it? Or? I, I heard yeah. it was at Telus Gardens. The oh, new. no way. That's yeah. what I heard. Yeah. Oh, man. That's like, huge. Well, it's right up the street from, because there's a Microsoft just down yeah. the street there. Right. Too, right? Yeah. What do you think of this about Vancouver? Because, I mean, it seems to be drawing in uh, all these type of. These, especially a lot of tech companies are moving to Vancouver now. Right. What do you think it is? It's just, uh, I mean, I guess the whole corporate tax thing is a lot lower uh, up here. So a lot of corporations are moving their head offices to Canada right. because of that. I'm wondering if it's the same thing with Amazon and tech companies. But it seems like Vancouver, maybe it's just a very desirable place to live in Canada. And they're like, let's just go there. Well, like, what do you think it is? Yeah, let's Vancouver. It's one of the top places to live in the world, right? Like, I mean, if you want to live somewhere, you want to set up shop, yeah. Vancouver's a nice place. If you've got a business that's going to be sustainable, why not make it sustainable in a place that you want to live? Yeah, right. You know, I always tell people, like, when I talk to people in there, like, I do business coaching with, with some people, right? Or, or I like to call it more mentoring than coaching because, you know, like I've been through a lot of it too. So it's yeah. not like I'm telling you to do things that I don't have any experience with. Um, but I always ask people, like, where do you want to live? You know, like, you should think about that first before you decide a career path in some yeah. cases. A lot of people think about, well, what do I want to do? And yeah. then they figure that out. And then afterwards, they're trying to figure out, well, now, will that support where I want to live? You know, like Vancouver is very backwards that way. Right. Like, what do you want to do? Where do you want to be? And right. why are you doing what you're doing? You know, just exactly. start with why and boom. So were you, with the, were you on the ground floor with Fitness Town when they started? Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the founder partner, you're, you're founding one of the founders. Founders. Yeah. And uh, what's the journey uh, like with Fitness Town been like for you? How, how's that? How, when did oh, it start and, uh, and what's that whole journey been like? Yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah. You, you know, we talked about Gen Xers, right? And that work ethic. I, it, I've been that guy you know 60 hours a week no problem yeah <laughs> sure tell yeah. me where to go i'll do it yeah. when did it start and, um well my business partner ceo james newman uh he's had three different companies like this is the third iteration of his company over 27 years okay um so he's one of the literally like the granddaddies of specialty fitness retail in canada um, one of his original partners of the Apple Fitness chain of stores, which is the chain of stores that were here in Vancouver, uh, he used to, tr this guy that, that founded those, uh, Ray Beck, was an old school lifter. Like, old school. Like, he used to train with Frank Zane and he used to train with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, wow. Like, from that generation. School, that generation. Yeah, yeah. He used to own a gym that was over on Main Street. And it was called Main Street Gym. And it was in the little dungy basement. It, it was like straight out of Rocky. Remember Rocky? <laughs> like the old... Oh, yeah. Like just... It was that. Yeah. It was that kind of a gym. Yeah. And uh, he, that was his. It was his gym. And then upstairs, he had supplements and basic equipment. And that's how he got into the business. Mm. You know, the one fed the other. And when I say they were doing supplements, they were in a back room packing capsules. Okay? Wow. Like, this is like... They were making their own back. supplements. They were making their own supplements. They were like, full <laughs> on. Like, cap wow. and stuff in the back, putting yeah. them in bottles and selling them off the shelves. Like that—that that wow. was it. They were pioneers. Yeah, you cool. Know? And uh, so James started as a trainer, and uh, got into the business. And pretty soon realized that you know personal training is a great business. If that's what you love, continue to do it. It's great. But the problem is, as soon as you stop training people, your income stops. Mm -hmm. It is a direct hourly exchange. You know, it's hours for dollars. Uh, so he recognized that <laughs> yeah. there was a limitation. You saw where retail could be great. If you could start having your own retail company, start having multiple stores that could run themselves, the opportunity was greater, you know? And, but he'd have to reproduce himself. Right. And uh, he joined Fitness Depot when they came out west from Ontario. So that's you guys right. are from out east, you, that's where they started. Yeah, yeah, we all know Fitness Depot. That's where I started, okay. was Fitness Depot. But yeah. here in Vancouver, he was one of the founding partners when they came out west. Uh, okay. And that's how I started into it. So this is back in almost 18 years ago. Wow. And then back in 2004, there was a, a bit of a breakup. Yeah. They agreed to disagree and uh, we kept the house. 
Uh, so we had four existing stores here that we converted over, and uh, then we expanded, added four more locations, a couple other companies, distribution channels, and, cool. and uh, been doing that ever since. Yeah. You know? in, so, the, in the 18, 20 years you've been involved with the fitness yeah. industry and, and specifically the equipment industry, yeah. uh, you know, what's been the trend? Like obviously I assume mm. it's been going up, but like, has there been any blips? Has there been any yeah. like hiccups and stuff? And, and what kind of costs those types of things like? Uh, well, you, you guys are in the same sort of business, you know, well, health and wellness. You're, 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 the float house in particular, you know, this is a discretionary dollar, right? When economic times take a turn for the worse, right? right? Like we, we've been through a couple now. I've been through two of these somewhat where, where you, we, we basically map what's happening. Look at what's happening in the U.S. And we know it's not too long after we're going to see the same happen here. And it's happened a couple times. And that's when the exchange rates have gone to like, a, a, you know, 40 percent, 50 percent. I remember at one time, yeah. you know, and you can imagine we were buying all our stuff in the U.S., our complete pricing structure and everything just changes overnight. Right. Yeah. You know, in some cases we're pricing ourselves right out of the market. It's really hard to stay competitive. And you see sales drop because people all of a sudden are seeing their housing values decrease, right? Like their nest eggs are decreasing and so they're, they're just being more frugal. Um, so even back a few years ago, we saw that. We, we saw people not buying the big ticket or rather than going to that treadmill that they normally would have said yes to, the, the main brand names like they see in the health clubs and getting that for the home, they would go down two levels. You know, so our, our volume stayed the same, but we had to do a lot more sales to make the same profit. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so we, you know, when you're in a discretionary spend type of business, it, you're, you, there is some level of volatility. And how is it now? Uh, it's pretty consistent. Like we, we do a lot of B two B, like commercial business, and right. we pride ourselves on that because yeah. we're, we're we're one of the few. Service, like we actually have our own service company. So we have a bunch of techs on the road, we service our own equipment, we service other people's equipment, we do a lot of maintenance contracts with like government and military and uh, wow. a lot of the big developments that you see downtown here, yeah. most of the, we put those in. And so we take pride in that, that we're not only gonna sell your product, we're gonna look after you afterwards, right? right. Yeah. You know, and right. Uh, so that's been sort of our, our thing. And we, we lose money on the service side of things. I mean. It's okay, yeah. Uh, because it, we hope to make it up on the other end. Right. But you know, it, it's like this. It's this summer, or I should say, this winter felt like a summer. Really? You, know, you guys know. Look at the weather that was here in Vancouver. Yeah, sure. that's part of it. If there's no rain, people are outside. Yeah. They're not buying yeah. equipment for the home. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, no, and we can understand. Uh, it's just interesting. I really like hearing about uh, how businesses started up. You know, we had a good conversation with uh, Peter Twist. You know? Oh yeah, Pete's great. He's awesome, yeah. and uh, he was telling us about uh, how he started off with the, with the functional ball. side of things yeah. and everything. And it sounded so familiar to how what we're in right now. Okay. Because this is so it's so new, it's yes. so different, um, and we're it's it's and it's still there's definitely no guarantee here for sure. sure. You know, but it's. Um, it's been a great start, but it's, uh, you know, it, we're, we feel that floating is very counterculture right now. You know, we're telling people, let's slow down. Let's go yeah. get into a box for 90 minutes and <laughs> think about your life and recover and rest and take that time. Where, like, you know, mainstream society is very much like, you know, have your coffee, go, 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 go. Yes. And that's what we're conditioned yes. to. And that's yeah. the norm. So we're, it's, it's been, it's, it's been a crazy journey the past few years just yeah. doing this and the amount of education and it's, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm saying this too well right now, but it's, 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 it's such a, it's a constant, uh, you know, battle for certain, certain things. Sure. It's just like, you know, what if I'm claustrophobic, you yeah. know, yeah. are the tanks sanitary, you know, am I going to be bored, this, that, all these different things. And it's, uh, but then at the same time, we get people that are just these, um, early adopters that are yes. just all over it. Yeah. And they're like this core group of people that just help us out and they're always there. That's how CrossFit so, grew. Right. You know? And that's um, what we're trying to really nurture right now is yeah. like recognizing the community, yeah. especially like our members, the people that come here who have been our best supporters, who probably go out and talk about it, who sure. are literally bringing in new people for us. I mean, that's that's the group that we need to give so much attention yeah. and love to and just nurture that and bring them along and, and you know, keep our standards obviously, but then, uh, that's that's I mean that's either that goes and we do that or it doesn't you know right. and, and for whatever reason it wouldn't work out but I you know a, a lot of symbols and direction are pointing towards this like a, a greater approach to mindfulness and yes and getting more in touch with like the subtleties of your body and all that kind of thing and, 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 and recovery stress management is the big right one. that's the biggest one like, right. stress you know we talk about the silent killer yeah oh <laughs> you know? it's, well, but look at it we, we screen time has never been 
more. You, you know, like I look at just even kids today, how much screen time they have in a week. It's sure. ridiculous. You know, they, they almost have equal time with screens as they do with wake time. Right. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, you know, right. when you look at that and then you look at their sleep, it's being shortened because their sleep patterns are being disrupted because of all the screen times. Right. Because so, you, you guys know all about the alpha waves and beta yep. waves and all yep. that. Yep. And they, it, we're just, and we're, we are go, go, go. So we have lots of stress. We're not moving our bodies to deal with the stress. Yeah. And on top of that, we're just sitting and looking at screens. Sure. It's crazy. It is crazy. It is it's crazy. crazy. So it's very good what you guys are doing. It's And, it, you know, it's a challenge. I mean, uh, in the fitness industry, I imagine, because you, you can have a wide range of products, mm -hmm. uh, which helps diversify your business, which They're is just which tools, probably though. stronger. <laughs> like for us, we basically have one product, right. more or less. And that's right. a, a bit more of a challenge there. We have one product. You know, any kind of business model you look at, they're like, they are constantly putting out new products all the time. Sure. And that's part of it, right? So sure. that's another challenge as well. The other challenge is that, you know, we had this crazy image uh, and we still have this crazy image of being really successful and like people don't know how hard it is and how hard we have to fight for that still you know mm -hmm. um, we had all these people kind of jump on and uh, like I said open up a bunch of centers you know right. so now it's like uh, you know we had this little thing carved out and all these people jumped into it and it was like you know it's okay, and, uh, it's, you know I, I've, I don't know if, as a consultant or uh, coach whatever you want mentor yeah. mentor yeah and you're from the outside perspective looking in what advice could you offer mm. or you know, you know well you guys clearly did a lot of research you know like you, you, and plus you had market research even I heard your story so I, I'm sure most people that are listening to this they may be familiar with that story yeah. you, you know you weren't exactly on the up and up <laughs> from right. a permit perspective no, oh yeah, however <laughs> what a great way to test it and, yeah. and pardon the pun but toe in the water right like mm -hmm. literally you you were testing the market to see if it was viable and that's awesome yeah. um, and then from there you, you found out there was a market and then you scaled up and your branding is really clean right like it's clean it's good it's uh, and, and if you are nurturing those early adopters they will become your sales force, right? Yeah, like they're just yeah. naturally going to talk about it. And, and eventually you'll hit a tipping point. But because you guys are at the forefront, you're the trailblazers. You have to yeah. be really pushing the metal to the education side of things. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that was something that we've always had to do at Fitness Town. We've always wanted to really educate the consumer on the products and always give them choices. And I was the first to tell a guy who'd come in and say, yeah, I want to buy a treadmill. I'm like, why? Did you wake up this morning and just decide, hey, today's the day I'm buying a treadmill? Because <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work like that. There's something. There was a trigger. Yeah. What, what's going on? You know? And uh, oh, well, I went and saw my doctor, and he says, I'm going to get diabetes. You know, if I don't start working out, I mean, I've got hypertension already. You know, like, and all of a sudden it will come out. You know, they, they've got a big reason why they need to do something now. But after I talk to them, just ask them questions, as they say in sales, qualify them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I'm very relationship based, so I want to get to know people before I commit to, to a transaction. Yeah. Um, because I hate people buying equipment and not using it. Yeah. I hate it. It's yeah. the worst thing in our industry. Right. And that's why there's a lot of bottom feeders selling really mm. subpar equipment. Yeah. And they flood the market, go on Craigslist, go on any of those online uh, classifieds. That's going to be frustrating. Yeah, it's brutal. And it's yeah. like, it's products like, I, I, if I stood on it at my body weight, the thing wouldn't move. Mm. I weigh more than that treadmill. So how do you expect that thing to support me running on it? Yeah. Yet we have a consumer that's not educated. So you have to deal with that. And I've been doing that. Like our industry is still really young too. Especially in fitness, retail, it's very young. You know, it's less than 30 years old. Like there's not, like how many people have TVs? Most people have multiples. How many cell phones are in a house now? You know, like how many computers? Yep. There's certain things that everybody has. There's certain appliances. Every home's got it. Fitness equipment's not that. And that's why there's a great opportunity still in our industry. You know, and the same with what you guys are doing because the stress aspect is only getting worse and worse. Right. Yeah. And I don't think people know that this is a, an opportunity for them to reset. Right. Like literally reset their adrenals, reset their stress in their life, yeah. and get focused and give them an actual opportunity. I mean, how many times are they have going to go in the tank before they can eventually clear their mind and actually just be present in the moment? Because I know that would be my problem. Mm. Yeah, like How many I'm, times? It it really depends on the person. I bet. I mean? Yeah, they're so and, wound up, right? Yeah, and oh, yeah. their expectations and all that kind of stuff. But it's really one of those things that, uh, you know, it's it's really the art of letting go. Yeah. And, and not trying. And as soon as you kind of just let it happen. Yeah. Uh, like you, like you'll be kind of thinking about something else, and you'll you'll go off. We call them thought journeys, or like a little daydream. But all of a sudden, it kind of just like fades to the background, and then you have 
you typically a quite a, of a sense sense like a sensation yeah. like experience of your of your body kind of dropping or rising there's, there's a very distinct sensation that you feel yeah. you're like whoa whoa what was that sure and really all it was is just uh well, I, I for me, really it's know. a dropping sensation. It, yeah. you, you, like you literally, it's you, it's it's not dropping like I'm falling, but dropping like like I'm sinking inward. It's it's very hard to describe when you have that kind of shift in your consciousness or whatever yeah. whatever is going on there in your physiology, combination of both. Yeah, uh, and you just you, you feel your body's like toning down, almost like you're falling asleep a little bit. Yeah. But you're literally, it, but, it literally feels like your your, yeah. your physical body is going. Boom. But you're more observant of it in there. Like when right. you're falling asleep, you probably don't recognize as yes. much that you're yeah, falling right. asleep unless you're dead tired and you're, yeah. you're just yeah. you know nodding off but in there you kind of notice that that shift that shift yeah. of like t- shutting down and it's yeah. really it's a strange sensation i think that's yeah. awesome it's like yeah. it's like your body's going into a sleeping state but you're 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 still conscious with that you know so imagine being conscious and feeling your body physically when it's in the deep state of relaxation that like sleep provides but this is i feel even more relaxing than sleep because uh just physically because there's no pressure points and you're floating in this ambient fluid that's kind of like, you know, like the that's womb so experience. Cool. We gotta get you in there. I know. I, I'm stoked. I'm gonna yeah, figure we'll out time next week. There. I'm coming. Well, I want to well. like document it all too because I've, I've had a number of people actually inquire with me cool. my opinion because well you know my well, site we should put you to like a yeah. challenge be like you yeah. know for a month like let's oh. try it for two times a week for a month or something and see how just that document feels the whole yeah. Thing. Yeah. Blog that'd it. be really cool you know, yeah for sure 100% be awesome um, awesome is there anything else that you want to get in there today <laughs> Oh, you know, oh, man. the beauty all day long. Oh, well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> oh, man, these things, they, they could go for hours. No problem. But, yeah. you know, and we, should, we can definitely do it again for sure. Sure. Um, so uh, I guess we could we could probably wrap it up pretty totally. soon. Yeah. But if you're interested in learning more about Di Manuel, it's his website, www.dianmanuel.com. His book, Whole Life Fitness Manifesto. And uh, I'm really looking forward to giving that one a read. I think there's some really useful advice. And uh, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Guys, thank you, man. This is is epic. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you back. This is awesome. Well, I'd love to come back again. Cool. uh, Just continue. Maybe you can come back after I've been through the challenge. The float chat would be cool. You know, just because I'm. I'm really excited about yeah. just well, that that process, you know. Cause yeah, I think you're right. Like you're like you're yeah. kind of like hmm, this could be challenging for me on a different way. Oh, like you're yeah, very way. used to the physicality and like yes, yeah, so let's, let's challenge myself physically and mentally with that. This is a mental challenge, but a a, a different it's different direction. Yeah. But it's, uh, I, I like think you there. can handle it. Yeah. I, feel like you're there. Oh, I feel like you're exploring Listen, that edge a little bit now. I I have been. You know, mm-hmm. To be honest, like I watched, and this is a little segue, but from people that have Netflix, you, you can watch some. I forget what it's called. I think it's The Galaxy, or is it called The Cosmos? It's a documentary, and it's based on a guy that was mentored by Carl Sagan. And Carl yeah, Sagan sort of. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. Yeah. Have you watched it? Oh, yeah. Like, watch the first episode of that. Yeah. And if that doesn't blow your mind and make you feel this big. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I got to. Like, Whatever. Well, because, yeah. I mean, yeah. you look at the whole scheme of it. it, 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 it 13.8 billion years old is what they predict they, they're they think that's how old the everything that is the universe yeah everything that is is yeah. 13.8 billion yet our whole idea of time and everything that we've learned would occupy like the last three seconds of a calendar year if you actually extrapolate it, it, it we don't know anything exactly I go yeah. and yet here we are concerned with mortgage payments and cars and buildings oh, and just see, go, go, go. And I'm no, like, Dai's asking the white, the right questions now. Dude, yeah, yeah. what is up? And I think like, it's a great segue up. into our, <laughs> into our <laughs> next podcast. Our next coming podcast. Up. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, like, we, did, we did an awesome, oh, con- uh, we did an awesome contest for this, for this podcast with uh, Carmel. And what we did was we, we gave away a whole ayahuasca retreat. Oh, no way. So down to Peru. So that she, must have been she, amazing. The place Mike went a couple times. I'm Jeez. definitely due to go. I haven't gone, but I will be going and uh, our next podcast can be about that journey so and we'd like to do something like we'd like to make that almost like a yearly thing that we do yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh yeah it's pretty cool so that is really cool yeah wow. if so. you guys want the ayahuasca pot or you know contest again let us know let us know the feedback so I put it out it. on facebook <laughs> cool. yeah cool. i want to enter it yeah, yeah. come on in yeah cool. so again cool. diemanuel.com find him on facebook twitter instagram Everywhere. every social channel out there he's yeah. there and thank you very much for coming on yeah, thanks, and we guys. should do it again i really appreciate awesome. it thanks. awesome thanks to whatever it is to whatever it is <laughs>